So, as you see in the title, I am making the Polar Express. And to get right to it, I do not know if this is coming out before or after Christmas. It is currently Friday. I Ah, uh, yeah, Friday, December 10th. I'm recording this part right here. I have to finish by Thursday next week. So I basically have a little over, a little less, I don't know, just basically a week to do this. Because that's just the deadline I have, I can't really make it after that. And this is going to be a big custom, and a big experiment as well. Because for the Polar Express, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a big boy tender, or my old big boy tender to restore it, because it's in bad shape anyway. A Scarlowy chassis, but I have to modify this. Two paint cans as the boiler, because it has a pretty big boiler. Yeah, so, big scratch build, it's gonna probably take some time, but I'm gonna work hard in it for the next few days, and hope I can get it done. The thing I'm counting on to make this go faster is the livery, because it's basically just gonna be black, a little bit of gray, I'm probably gonna print the logo, so, that, which that, no lining, which I mean, and no, like, big colors, that'll make it go a lot faster, I hope. So that's the hope here. Second of all, uh, this is also gonna double as a different engine. Pierre Marquette 1225. And if you don't know what that is, it is the real life version of the Polar Express. The one that people went to take the references for the actual one, some sounds from what I got. And another big thing uh, about the Pierre Marquette, I live, it's far, but a manageable distance from it. So I they actually just, so I asked my parents about this and stuff and just, it's, we're gonna try maybe, but. I might go. I might see it. Not like go on like the express, not express, but coaches because tickets are expensive. I looked that up. I did some research. But if I can literally just go take photos and just see it, that's awesome. I really hope. So I got to get to work on this and I'm really excited because I really want to make this and I want to see it hopefully. But at the same time, I, I don't know. I just, I'm hoping here. I have hopes. But okay, so, the plan is for this. It's gonna be a big scratch build, mainly. Like, half scratch build, I'd say. Because one thing I gotta do, gotta replace the wheels. Those I'm just gonna source from a different thing. And I might give it a spare wheel. Not like a, another one of these. I'm talking like a dummy wheel. Like a lot of Trackmaster engines have. In the tender, I'm just gonna... Can I, no, I can't put that apart right now. But I'm basically gonna fix it up. Because I think it's a good distance. Because, as you see... This is a lot longer, but I plan on making this a lot bigger as well. One thing is, one problem I think this might have is the boiler, because I thought I had a smaller paint tube than this, but these are still pretty big. But at the same time, it's a one of the it's a really big American engine, so I think I can get away with that. This is an experiment. This is a speed run. So I'm gonna skip the taking apart and just go straight to the well shaping. Actually, I'm gonna be really quick with this. Hopefully. So, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to just do the shaping now. No cuts between it, just straight to the shaping. Alright guys, so, like, two days later, I'm recording this. And, well... Sorry guys, I was just, uh, cleaning, I was cleaning up a bit, I was just moving that. So, here it is. Oh man, where do I even start with this? So, I believe I have a new favorite custom. This board right here. I am ridiculously proud of this. Like, the reason why I'm recording it, recording it here, I can barely even fit it in a shot on the customs in the making table. Or, like, where I make stuff. That's difficult. So I'm doing it here. It is massive. Like, let me get this for scale. Because here's my Thomas. Everyone has a Thomas. You know, like, nearly everyone who connects, collects Trackmaster. So, good scaling point. The height. The length. He's, like, right around here. Yeah. Pretty big difference. So, the process for this guy. Uh, how do I even start? Okay. Let's go over what I did first, I guess. So, first thing I did, the boiler. Like, I got the tubes. I had to clean them up first. They're still, like, kind of gross, but what I mean is paint tubes, right? You got the stickers on them, labeling... I had to get those off, and yet I don't have anything good for removing stickers except for soap, hot water, and scraping it. So there's a bit of excess on there. But I, I can't do the hand gesture. I'm hoping it'll look better once painted, and at this point I have no choice because 
and got this far. So I gotta just hope. What I did next after that was the running board. For this, I just got a good reference point. Oh, and also I like cut beneath here to make it fit on the chassis. I did that first. I, of course, made this part fit on the chassis. Then I went from there with the boiler. And now the running board. I got this bit up first. This bit, this bit, and on the other side, this bit. And actually, little fact. I, by looking at photos, seeing this part and this part, this one goes forward more on the running board than the one on the right side. So, little fact I learned. So it goes from here, down, then I added this piece next. Then, that brought me to be able to work on the front. I got the slope down mainly. This bit at the back came in later. But I got the main base, with the slab, then like a little square right here. And I think then I worked on the smoke box, which I cut a circle of cardboard out and put it on the outside. Then I got two small, one small and one a little bigger layer of cardboard. And with hot glue smoothened it out. That's how I got the smoke box door. For the light on the front, that is part of a glue stick with two bits of paper on the side, or card on the side, for what the like the little number will be. Or not number, whatever, whatever's there, I don't remember. And another number board on the bottom. Right here and right here were done later, but those are like the lights. Like, not the lights, but I think the little indicator codes. I don't know what they are for American terms. And another thing I did was get the bell. This bell is actually from my Flying Scotsman USA project from way back in the day. Oh, something made a weird noise. Eh, it's fine. But it's from my old Scotsman USA attachments. But I'm going to be redoing that eventually, so I'll find something for that. So it doesn't matter. You may, I made this. And from this point on, don't remember what I did. So let me just go over my get from this way to that way. Made the little feed water heater. And actually, might as well bring this up. This is basically going to be a Perry Marquette. I'm fine. I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong now. I don't remember how I said it before. But this part here, I'm based this off the Perry Marquette. Ugh, I'm saying it wrong. But yeah, I based it off that other than the Polar Express's shape. Because although the Polar Express is very similar, I, don't, I just really like the uh, light that goes out more instead of the one that's embedded in the smoke box store. And I like this little bit. I like where the whistle's placed, all that. So I overall went with that. Because this is going to actually double as both. Because like the Polar Express, I'm probably going to have it branded as that as Christmas, at Christmas time. And you know what? Actually, I'm thinking I'm going to put the Marquette logo on the side it, as the base. But then like get a way to attach the Polar Express logo for December. So this is more of a Marquette design than a Polar Express, technically. But eh, Christmas. Going to call it a Polar Express. So, another thing I did, the funnel is a weight, I cut through here, like with the drill, and made it bigger, so I could fit the weight in here, and also, it, you may see there's some, like, shiny stuff on the inside, that's because it glued some weights, because this was not sitting on the chassis how I'd like in the front, and what's next? So, this part right here, they don't have this, this is, like, something I used, like, a little boiler band, because with the designs... Or, of, I don't know what the class is called exactly, but the smoke box is a little smaller than the boiler, but I didn't want to do that. So, this is kind of meant to represent the cutoff point, if that makes any sense. Going back more, dome. I cut out a circle, just a panel of a circle. Then I got the little wall around it, cut that, made sure to cut it then to the right curvature or whatever, so it worked well. Then I got to this part, the, I believe it's the sand dome. I could be very wrong about that. Correct me if if you know so that very similar process made like a rectangle and did that and did the same stuff for the side and as well as i put paper on the joints that curve just so it works a lot better worked well and these squares i added later but they're like little opening hatches don't know what this part's called and this part i might know but i'm not going to say it but this it's simply just three there are three slabs of cardboard wrapped in paper to make it look a bit more oval like not oval, but like flat, or flat curve, flat curve, like that. And this is just a bit of a straw covered on the top with hot glue so it doesn't go in with this little part for the poking out bit. This part is just cardboard. I extended on that and made a little box, basically similar to, or similar to this stuff. Cab, pretty easy, actually. Got two squares, two identical squares, both sides. That was the base. Well, first, I actually got this. 
I cut it out. Actually, it goes back into the boiler, so I had to, or it goes back into the cab, so I had to cut out an opening hole for this. So I did that. Oh, time under detached. That actually works well. And the front part, or top part, that was another cut piece. And also, also, yeah. Fun little addition I thought I might add. Although, I may have to hold it down with a blue tack when I'm done, because it likes to just move randomly when I'm like, just doing whatever. So, oh yeah, like that. It does that a lot. So I may have to just blue tack that a bit. No, opening the back of the cab just open, and I actually added this part in the end. That I made. I did this last before I started recording because this has a little bit of a gap, and I want to do it. I forgot what it's called, but I know like all steam engine tender engines have that. Yeah, and you also got the whistle right here, which just goes back. And what else? What's the next thing I should go over? Oh, in the front, I'm I'm actually oh, I think this looks so good from like this angle, but cow catcher went with the smaller one that actual class has the polar express has like a kind of big old engine one i watched a video on that kind of cool i'll link it if i remember it yeah it's it's a cool video it shows like the differences between the polar express and the paramarket pure market whatever it's called yeah it, it's cool and this is from a just like backman or whatever i i have a few like american knuckle couplers spare so just grabbed one of those like i did for my one dock tank i don't have that right now but if you if you know the video then yeah so you also got these bits just built up with cardboard and a paper clip right here for like the little handrail. And actually, speaking of handrails, these on the side, these are just uh, paper clips. I had to do two paper clips per side because it was too long. Yeah, this is like a really long one. Another, and now's a good segue to talk about the chassis. chassis. Uh, this is actually a accurate wheelbase for once. Like, you got the 284. These two wheels in the back don't work. This one kind of, but... At the same time, it really limits its turning radius than helping or with whatever. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like barely clears it, but it looks good, I think. And actually, this would be covered by the little uh, outside frame bits, but I don't have the space for that, so it's going to be open, if that, if that makes any sense. This part right here, it like loops, it goes through here and on the, uh, on the other side. This other piston and that are one piece, but I just curved it right to fit the pistons in. And actually, I used like a long piston from a spare uh, old Henry I had, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'd be able to replace that. I, it's for a future thing, so that's future me's problem. This is a Trackmaster two wheel cut off for both sides, and I've seen people do this before. This is not my design. I've seen like people do it with a lot of eight wheeled engines. You like get uh, another side rod, glue it to the back one, and it moves with it. This is just a dummy wheel. And I actually really do like it. It, it helped spread it out more, I think. Because I used to think the chassis was really ugly. I thought it did not work at all, and I hated it. At the same time, it's like, eh. But I think it looks pretty good in the end. I, I don't have a problem with it anymore. Yeah. And what else? What's the next thing? Oh, I also added these. I don't know what they are, but they're just straws. I think they look nice. Add a bit to the running board. And... Man, I've been, nine minutes. I've been talking for nine minutes. Okay, just checking the time on this. Well, this is a long clip, but I got a lot to talk about. Firebox just cut cardboard. Yeah, and so. Tender. This part, this like coupling, there's just a pin on the bottom of this. Yeah. But it's my old big boy tender, but I redid it, fixed it up. It's a little small with it, not gonna lie, but I'm doing this quickly. I don't have the time to make a bigger one. Maybe next year. Edit this thing on the top. And like overall, I think it looks a lot better than the old Big Boy Tender, 100%. This is meant to be a ladder, by the way. And I removed the back buffers because I didn't do that with my Big Boy. I don't know why. And just, this is overall quite a bit neater. Ready to do that. And, uh, oh, actually, here, let me skip a part of the video. So, I know what you're thinking. Why would you think that? Why? Really? No. Okay, so on another note, about this, as you may see, there all appears to be a battery inside. However, this, the switch is covered. What am I going to do? Huh? How am I going to make it move? Because it can run. Well, as you see, there's a little uh, paper clip that pokes out of the boiler in the cab. And if I push it, per perfect timing. Okay, so you got to mess with it a bit. There you go forward, bring it back, I think you can see it from there, yeah, 
and I actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. It kind of worked, it actually, if I got it right, okay, it's a little harder to do, but I can still grab it with the tender arm. And, well, I have to work on this still. Because this falls off super easily. Just did it now. I'm probably going to, like, poke a hole in it, glue it. Yeah, I'm thinking that. And, plus, it's ooh, another thing that it's going to be, that, that would be hard to take the shell off. Because the shell, actually, it's held on by gravity. Ta-da! Yeah, and here's a better view of it, the chassis. So you get the two back wheels, four wheels, front wheel. Runs all right. Yeah, really nothing too fancy. This part right here, barely anything. If anything, supports the back a little bit. I seriously think this looks awesome without the chassis. Like, I almost think it looks better. Because, like, you got the legs, you got the front, and it's not root. It's like, the. it's almost like the quality drops with this. It's like, here... I just think it's like a nice little scratch build model. Put it on here. Like, I don't know, it just like... It feels like it brings the quality down a little bit. I won't lie. Should look better once painted, though. I'm hoping on that. But this was really the main bit. All of this is like scratch built, sourced from parts like magnets... Not magnets, weights. And the coupling. Apart from... And the bell. And the glue stuck. But apart from that, like, I cut most of this out. And I'm seriously happy with this. And this is still here. It's like mainly attached to that so and actually back to the little uh if i can poke it through here this bit i'm probably gonna just like get it better attached when it's done actually same with the knuckle coupler because it's really just like loosely fit right now and is barely sticking out enough to work and actually i grabbed my american engine i talked about they, they can actually couple together i don't have the chassis on right now but they're basically at the same coupler height yeah so but once again so happy with this. I think this is my best custom. I'm saying that so far. I I think the shape is actually best. some of my best work. I won't lie. Like, really. It actually feels really nice to have a, like, good big shaping project again. Because as of late, I've been working on Murdoch. What was the one before that? Uh, I forgot what I made before. Yeah, uh, Alfred and Groven. And Daniel. But they're really... The shaping on that, I did that. Then, like, it took a long time to paint. So, it's been just so long since I was able to do a lot of shaping. And it's kind of fun to do. I still got it, I think. Yeah, and honestly, I might do some scratch builds like this more. I mean, half scratch builds, because you got actual source parts. So, just... It's fun. Like, I can kind of have my own creative freedom for it. And you don't have to use the expensive models you get off eBay, because prices are going up. What is going on with Trackmaster on eBay right now? Yeah, just prices are crazy, but I, I, I guess they're, I get it, they're rare, whatever. All right, next thing. So, in terms of livery, I'm gonna be doing it a little different from the Polar Express. I'm, well, I'm first thing is I'm gonna keep the matte black. I'm gonna do it like my dock tank, where I do matte black and a matte clear coat. And that should look fine in the end. I'm still thinking, but what I want to do different is add a little bit of white. And a gray smoke box. This is mainly based off the pair of Marquette. Where the smoke box is gray. And all that. Whatever it is. Because like I want to make this to be a pair of Marquette. If I feel like I'm saying that wrong still. First. And then like just rebrand it as a Polar Express in this video. And around Christmas next year. Or it's when I need to. So. Yeah. With that. Really know what I'm happy to do. Finally get to the easy part. Painting it black, and uh, I'm gonna make, paint the smoke box gray as well. Well, like kind of a dark gray, a little white, just in the middle. So, start that now. And now I have the black and gray paint on. So, first things first, the you may notice smoke box is gray, and I did mention this last scene, I believe, but I don't know. I just I wanted to base this more off the pair of Marquette than the Polar Express. And I just think the gray smoke box really helps the look. So I really just wanted to go with that. I think it was all right. Yeah. But I do really like it, actually. I think it's brought together so much. And like, as I said, I think it looks so much better without the chassis on. Just like something about it just feels really just big. But I feel like when you have like the chassis on, that downscales it. But either way, I do like it. So yeah, basically it all painted. You have underneath a bit. Uh, in the cab. You can't really see with the light, but it's in the cab. Over here, on the top. And, but I also did some of the smaller stuff, like paint the funnel. This part right here, which is, uh, it's the water heater. Yeah, I remember that. 
and the lamp and stuff painted those black and i also repainted the tender chassis bits because they weren't in a great painting condition yeah and the tender eh, okay now that it's painted i don't like it that much there's a lot of like glue marks you can see through it but i think it should be okay once i get the logos on it's just uh i don't like it all that much but i mean it's all right i don't hate it it's just glue marks that's what i mean it all right it all right chassis painted and of course i can take this all off like i can take these two wheels off the chassis off apart from that it's all glued together but it it does work yeah i don't have a battery in it but it still works and all i do like it and also one change i made i made this a lot easier to do because before with that i'd like hook it on like bring it in put it on the thing and just move it back and forth and it would fall off a lot but now i poked a hole through it and put a well the just a paper clip over it like just a little hook so now it's always responsive because like depending on where you had it it was harder to move it and yeah a lot easier and now what i've the thing that gets you to the final step of doing this i can f start work on the final details and for the final details, I printed a few logos and stuff. Well, like, actually, I'm going to go with the Pear Marquette logo first because, I don't know, I just feel like I want this to be more of that around the year. But during Christmas time and for this video, I will just, like, just slap the Polar Express logo on with a little bit, a little bit of blue tack. Not a great method. I'm actually doing that with a certain Christmas special, if you've seen Twitter. I'm working on that currently. Nearly done. So, but it should be okay. It should look all right. I have a way for that, so for that, I'm just going to do the Pear Marquette, slap the Polar Express over it for Christmas, if that makes any sense. And really, got to do like a bit of gold, a little bit of color, like I'm going to do white on the side, so that's something the Pear Marquette has. And really, after that, can do the clear coat and stuff, and then it would be done. Oh, also, it's uh, currently Tuesday, the day after Monday, I believe that was yesterday's clip, yeah. I got this done in decent time. Like, of course, the black helped get that fast, but, yeah. And actually, I think Wednesday is my last day to work on this. I could work on it Thursday, I think. I could, but that's just kind of the I'm iffy about I will have time to do it or not. But, yeah, I'm saying 100%, unless I get busy, or unless, like, I'm busy helping my family with something, I don't know, because I had to do some stuff today, and it made me almost not be able to finish the paint today. But I should be, like, free to just work on this tomorrow, I'm hoping, and it should be done tomorrow. That's what my hope is. And I'm really excited to get this done. So with that, time for the final details. All right. And with that, the final details are all done. So happy about this. Like I'm going to finish it today. Today is the next day after the last clip, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah. Today's the next day after the last clip. It is Wednesday. I don't know why I'm forgetting this much. So basically today is base almost around maybe the last day. It's either I have a little time Thursday, but either way, it's going to be done today. And I am just excited for this because it's a surprisingly short from time, but quite a big project. Now I'm going to stop talking and go over it. So first things first, the simplest tender. You got the pure Marquette both sides. And I actually like, so I did this with paper, but if I get it in the lighting right, you can barely even see it. And it's like the matte against the matte paper. It, it actually works pretty well. And another thing is, I have the Polar Express logo printed. It's just in the end, I'm going to slap it on. This is just going to be the normal state for it. So that's that. That's why it's just saying that now. The Polar Express lettering will be on the tender. Just putting that on later. Now for the main part. First things first, you got the little white on the sides. This is something that Pierre Marquette has in one of its liveries and I really like it thinks it think it like adds a lot makes the black pop out the gray all that and you got the 1225 on the cab because this is just going to be 1225 yeah I'd like it that way mostly but it, it's not going to be too hard to rebrand it might even keep the 1225 in the Polar Express form bit lazy but yeah I can I think I can get away with it I don't know and this is just a little bit of gold up there it really doesn't matter all that much, but from what I saw by looking at some photos, there was gold on that bit. You got the whistle painted. Really, a little gold always helps. Like, I did the gold and bell first, and it really just improved the look. So, really, that brings me to the front. You got the gold bell, and though for the lamp here, 
just finished painting that last. I just mixed a bit of yellow with uh, white to get like a bit of a slightly lit lamp look. And I think it looks all right. Don't know why my hand's like shaking at ear, sorry. But really the rest of it is just the little uh, lettering. The 1225, 1225, 1225, 1225, 1225. I'm messing up on that, but yep, you get it, 1225. Actually, wait, why are there so many 1225s here? There's uh, it's, it's what I saw in the photos, I can't explain it. Now, even though I'm super happy about this, one thing I have to complain about, which I've been doing that, is the side rods. Yeah, I, I don't really mention this a lot, but one thing I just really hate is painting side rods. Like, I prefer to do that not at all. Yeah, because just, I don't know, I feel like it, the paint never goes on right, especially considering it's white. And considering that these are a bit darker, it just, it pops out so much, but I'm just going to deal with it. I'm going to weather them a bit. I think that might help even it out. But overall, it's just a little uh, thing I don't like. But I'll live with it. I'll live with it. So, now, all I need to do, give it a fair bit of weathering, mainly on a smoke box, because the rest is a matte black. That would be black weathering against black. So, hey, got to see how that goes. But yeah, just like weather the smoke box a bit put a clear coat on. I'm going to do a matte clear coat like I did for my uh, dock tank. I don't know where that is actually, but oh, actually right, right here. So it's going to look like this in the end for, for the black finish, I hope. So weathering in a clear coat, then it's all done. And now it is 100% painted. Wouldn't say complete because I haven't put it together yet, but seriously, like not even 2% close to that. Well, 2% close, I'd say. Just, okay, nearly there. That's all I have to say. To go over it, to put it simple, got the matte clear coat on. Probably more noticeable on the tender. It's like a little bit more glossy, but retains the matte look of it. And that's something I do really like. Like this, I think it really shows on here. I don't know if you can see this on camera. I think it picks it up on camera, but I think it just looks really even now, and I love it. I love it. And actually, uh, I did weather the smoke box. I did go quite ham on it is that the word yeah quite ham i don't know just using weird terms so did weather it a lot because america you got like the gray smoke box so that would technically or technically burn out where all the like coals at so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna ramble here so weather the smoke box yeah and along the boiler a bit but that really isn't noticeable and i have it on the cardboard to not bend the snow plow cow catcher bit because that's just gonna put too much weight on it now on it now yeah sorry paint it sprayed this a bit it should be fine yeah and you got the wheels i'm just i'm not gonna I'll go over these all that much and i did weather the uh these and clear coat them but they don't look that good still that's my one complaint but apart from that i really like it that's all i gotta say so with that all that there's left to do is assemble it Well, here it is. This is the Polar Express. Oh well, pair Marquette for now. I am ridiculously happy with this. I'm gonna slide it around on here because this is big in the scale. Just let me get my Thomas again. Actually, I may have just I may have used Thomas for an image, not the video. But look at this. He's about like three, three, two and a half Thomases long. And if I can get my Henry, or no, I can get Gordon. Gordon's right here. He's barely even the size of the engine himself. I'm, I mean, it, it's huge, yeah, but it's an American engine. I think I can get away with that. But either way, so happy with it. I love this a lot, and I'm very happy with the final result. Especially considering that this is quite literally a speed run, because I had a dead time set for this, or else I couldn't really work on it anymore. Therefore, it would be done after Christmas. But it's before Christmas, Wednesday. So, very happy with it. And what is that? I started, like, around Saturday or Sunday and finished Wednesday. I'm not going to do them. Okay. Probably going to... Okay, so. Here it is. Polar Express, or Pure Marquette right now. I'll go over it mainly. So, first things first, starting from the front. You got the normal stuff from before. You know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to move the camera around. 
I'm gonna try and keep a steady hand, but I haven't, I've been keeping it still. I'm gonna do that for once. So, here you have it, and here's like a little side shot. Because I just, the main thing for this is the tender is kind of small, not gonna lie. But I think it still works. It still works. Ooh, and also, I don't know if the clear coat uh, froze this, but does it work? Oh, okay, not well, but it can still open. It can still open. I don't know, I just think it's a fun detail. And as well, oh, this is gonna be hard to do. Yeah, if I push it forward, pull it back. Oh, I don't think I pulled it back the whole way. Okay, yeah, just overall, I love it so much. It's powered, most of my stuff has not been powered as of late. Ridiculously happy with it, seriously. And just, oh, look, I don't even know what to say. It's just, this was a really fun scratch build. Like, I barely do scratch build projects. Like, actually, never mention this in this. But uh, my S160 from before, although it's in a sorry state, I'll put this on the stand. I actually tried scratch building an S160 a long time back, maybe even a bit before that. Like, maybe a year ago, year and a half, I don't know, when I first started getting back into custom making, or did YouTube or whatever. Just, it was a while ago. And it looked really bad, I didn't even finish it. But this, this is a big leap of, like, a mostly scratch build. So, I might do some more in the future, because this is actually really fun. Like, I want to make more American engines one day. That just seems really fun to me. And this may be the way to go about it, not gonna lie. So, extremely happy with that. And I'm happy to get this done in the holiday season. Man, I just, oh, Christmas is awesome. I love Christmas. But, here's the thing. I think that I should start switching this to its Christmas form. Here it is, the Polar Express branding. So, as you may see, all I did was slap the Polar Express logo on, didn't change any of the number boards or anything. Admit, I admit, it's the lazy route. I'm, if I do anything like a remake or something, I'd probably cover up the numbers and stuff, make it look better. But for now, it's gonna be this. And let me put this back on the stand. So, this would be in its Polar Express state. It's just some paper put on with glue tack. Because it's black against black, unless I get it in the light, like right here, you can't tell too well. But I think it blends in pretty nicely. Yeah, and it's really hard to turn this thing around, especially with this, uh, like, blanket as the table snow. Yeah, but I do like it. I do like it. Man, I just, I'm so happy to do this. Because, really, this started off with me wanting to make, make it out of, like, a Connor. To me thinking that it was going to just look bad with that. To me thinking that it looked bad while making it. To me thinking it looked really nice. And I still think it, it looks really nice. Just like, it, I, uh, I just really didn't know how this would turn out. That's how to put it. And I think it turned out amazingly. Like, uh, I really love it. I think it's just one of, I think it might be my favorite actually. I'm sorry, I'm like going on a ramble here. But really, it's just, I think it's my favorite. To keep it simple. So, really... In conclusion, this was a kind of last minute project I had in mind, and I was able to do it in time, which I'm very happy with. I'm saying very happy a lot, but I do mean it. And for being one that I went rather quickly on, I really do feel like it looks pretty nice. Like, I admit, things I don't like, like there's glue marks, but those can't be helped too much. But who knows, I may even add a bit more to it next year, like maybe some cab control looks, things, uh, what else? I don't even know what I'd add, but just... It's just an idea. Maybe even over the year, I don't know. It's just next Christmas, maybe a small Polar Express scene remake. Probably nothing crazy, because come on. Like, you know the ice scene. That's crazy. I don't think I could ever remake that. But if I could, I totally would. Oh, and another thing, actually. I'd totally make like a rake of coaches to go with this if Polar or just Express coaches in general weren't so hard to get. Like, I could have an attempt at making some, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, uh, what are they? Coaches. Express coaches, like one for Gordon. Those are expensive. <laughs> well, not not too expensive. I don't know, actually. I haven't checked the prices in a while. But it's just, it's going to be hard to get a lot of. But if I could, I totally would. It's just not the time. So, who knows? Maybe some Express remakes in the future. Small. I would say small. But, I mean, speaking of, like, Christmas stuff, I've mentioned this on Twitter and stuff, and I even think in the earlier bit of this video... But I am working on a Christmas special for Saturday, or Friday, this Friday after this video. I just need to edit it and do some voice lines of my own for it. But it will be ready. It will be ready. I'm going to be working on that after this. I really just need it to be quiet, which I know I'll be able to get some quiet to do it. So, guarantee it will be out by then. 
And work for, like, filming has been done on it, so look for that later. Yeah. And really, this is the Polar Express Custom and Pure Marquette 100% complete. And so, to end, thank you for watching. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a goodbye. Can you believe it, guys? Christmas, just a week away. Christmas is in a week. Woohoo! I am so happy about this information. Christmas, just a week away. Oh, wow. Can you believe it? Christmas, just in a week. It got here so fast. Christmas, just a week.